All right, guys, uh, your old friend Birdman here with today's story. Now, today's story, I kind of did an audible. I got to the line of scrimmage. I had a play. I saw the defense, and I did an audible. I'm about to throw a touchdown. What I mean by that is this. Uh, randomly, I was sitting here. I was about to continue my the beginning of my jail storyline. You know, I have a jail story series coming up for my time in jail. It wasn't that long, but it was long enough uh, for it to suck and to learn a lesson. Anyways, um, that's what I was going to do today. But then I got inspired for a, a specific story because one of my boys from back home, uh, Facebook messaged me like, hey man, glad you're doing well. I watch your YouTube channel and uh, it's pretty cool stuff, man. It's funny. Um, you know, it sucks too. It was tough, but like that's some good stories. And that's the point of it. You know, I understand that things aren't cool. I'm not glorifying them, but um, that's what honestly happened. I'm not going to put it on front like I was a model citizen. Can't make a good YouTube channel about that anyway. So, fuck, I got some crazy ass stories. Most of them is I'm the fucking dirt bag of them all. And I accept that because I'm no longer that person. Um, I've made lots of changes, man. And uh, if you know me, most of the people on the channel now that are watching are like my Facebook friends from back home, a lot of them. And uh, so I'm going to do this story because my boy from back home said, Hey, man, you remember the day that this happened? That's why I knew you're a good kid at heart and that like inspired today's story, which in turn will inspire future stories. If you YouTube watchers, I don't know who exactly is watching, but I know there's people watching that I didn't know were watching from back home. If you guys have a dirty bird type story, a Birdman special, I'll call it, um, I'll do a Birdman special story. Um, message me on Facebook or hit me up on the comments on the YouTube. Always remember to like and share so my page can grow. Maybe I can get paid off these stupid ass shenanigans I did, you know? Um, that'd be cool too one day, but it's just starting off now. I'm just doing it for rec. I'm on quarantine. I got nothing else to do. And uh, it's a good reminder for myself. I do it. It's therapeutic for me, um, you know, to remember these times. So I try not to repeat them. I have a crazy scheme. I go, like, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. You know, my old bird thoughts sometimes creep in and I fight them off. Speaking of fighting, this video here is about a fight. I said in my last video, or maybe the one before, where I beat up my roommate, I said, hey, I swung first, not that I'm a tough guy, but I was never scared to fight. I'll get my ass kicked if I have to, but I ain't scared to fight, whatever. And uh, randomly enough, the uh, world went in such a way that my boy randomly hit me up before I was going to do the jail video today and reminded me of that story. And I was like, shit, you know what, that's going to be today's story. And if you have a Birdman special story, hit me up and I could uh, I could do that story here for everybody. We can all have a good laugh at your friend the Birdman's expense. It's all good. You know, I can look back and laugh at this shit now because, you know, right now, knock on wood, I'm like I'm getting the last laugh in life. Things are going really well. Um, I hope it stays that way. And I pray every day. Every morning I pray for guidance and protection. Not to have any old Birdman thoughts throw me off my path and lose everything that I worked so hard to build. Because when I got out of jail, I went to a sober house. I'll get into those stories too in the future. I got out of jail with no license, no car, no family, no friends, no nothing. And that was my starting point in recovery. It was only at that point of losing all those things was I... Uh, beat up enough to do whatever it took to stay off the drugs that and a year of probation with four three to four years hanging over my head if i messed up the probation and failed the drug test so that helped me uh stay on the straight and narrow too i ain't gonna lie in front like it was all me i was scared to go back to jail because jail fucking sucks um people are saying quarantine sucks it's a little side note before story that yeah, quarantine sucks but fuck man like be glad you're not in jail most people watching this video, be glad you're not in jail. Because ain't no model citizen churchgoers or engineers or scientists watching this channel. They'd be like, what the fuck is this kid talking about? But my listeners respect this shit and they listen to it and they think it's funny. And in this case, they will remember the actual story. Let's get into it. I also did have a relapse, but I relapsed on cigarettes. I got a pack today. Better that than coke or dope. So this is a story here. What happened was, this is my hometown. The time frame was uh, probably about two years before I went um, to like my, my second rehab stint. I uh, had never done heroin to this point yet. I was in my hometown. I wasn't hanging out with the dope fiends in the hometown. 
but I was a degenerate pill addict and an Oxycontin Percocet addict uh, for many years. But I was always against doing dope for the longest time. I was like, I ain't no fucking dope head. I'll never do that. And that's why I say, um, like, I've never shot up. And that's why I say when I talk, um, I've never shot up yet. It doesn't mean I'm planning on going and shooting up. It means that in my past experience, when I said I'll never do something, I would try it and then just rock out until the bitter end. Jails, institutions, death. Very close to the last one. Five-day coma. I woke up from a five-day coma. For you Patriot fans, uh, I woke up from a five-day coma. I asked for my cell phone off my overdose. And the thing I saw on my phone in the news was uh, Patriots were accused of deflating footballs. Uh, it was the uh, Tom Brady deflate gate scandal. Now we can get on to the story, I promise you. Everybody has it clicked off the page already. Get YouTube Premium so you don't have to fucking get commercials. So there's a story. In my hometown, uh, there's a crew that we would hang out with, and it was like my boys, they were renting a house. A family member of theirs rented out a house to them. There was like three of my boys there, and these are, one of them is a straight up solid citizen kid, never has done coke. All his friends that he'd hang out with, most of us were doing it and doing bad things. But he was never into that. He would like maybe, maybe smoke pot, you know, at the most. He would get drunk. He was a citizen, a good kid, and uh, but he wasn't degenerate like most of his uh, surrounding friends were. And then um, the other the other one is one of my close friends. Um, I got these fake names. Uh, all right, I'm gonna need his name in, in the story. I'm gonna use a fake name, something that doesn't even sound like it could be anything. I'm gonna randomly pick a letter. It's not the beginning letter of his name. I'm gonna randomly pick uh, V. So we're at my boy V, his house and his roommate, we'll call him Q. Q is the good kid, V is also a good kid, also not a drug drug user, also in this apartment. They had a third roommate, which was pretty much the reason I would hang out there for the most part. I could go out there and hang out with, with uh, I forget the letter, the B and V, whatever the two names I just said were. Um, I would go there and hang out with them to like smoke, but there was a third roommate that, you know, he was doing more than smoking. He wasn't into opiates ever, but he loved to sniff some blood. So I'd hang out there and uh, be sniffing coke all the time, like all night, and just, you know, till the bitter end. I was living at my mom's house at the time, but I would crash there most nights. They started getting mad at me because I would couch surf there all the time. Like, I wouldn't go home to my mom's because I'd be sniffing all night. I wouldn't want to go home all fucked up. So I basically lived there too at this time, but not officially. Like, I didn't have to pay rent. I got the free couch for months. Um, and we just partied out and did crazy shit. I pissed them off so many times. There's probably a million stories that I could spit off of just any of those days, but this is today's story, the fight. They said about me being a fighter, not the biggest, strongest kid in the world, not even the best fighter, but I'm a great shit talker, which gets me into lots of fights, and uh, I don't really like backing down, um, even if I think or know I might lose or probably going to lose. Fuck it, I might get the upset, and if a little old me pulls off the upset on someone that's bigger and badder and tougher, then you know that's going to make me look up. Uh, really good in my little hometown bubble area so give me some street cred in my hometown and at the time that was one of the few things that was important to me for some reason um, was shit like that street cred in my hometown with a bunch of my degenerate friends so a third the third roommate we'll call him D because my name is D also I'll use a D for his name okay so his uh so D lived there too and he liked to party and I like to party so we would party and his pot smoking roommates Q and V, they were just, uh, you know, they're just potheads and they would be like, you guys are fucking idiots. We'd have a bunch of cokeheads there sniffing. They're citizens. They have to be up at work. They'd go up, get up for work and we'd still be sniffing. They'd be like, you guys are fucking idiots. Get the fuck out of here. Sometimes they would get mad and like kick me out for the day. And I'd go to my mom's house, take a nap, and then like weasel my way back in there whenever it was cool again. I kind of feel them out on Facebook. Hey, man, you guys still mad at me? Um, can I come sleep on your couch for another couple weeks? You know, I don't make rent money, but maybe, uh, Maybe I'll get some blow, I'll rob someone, bring some blow by, we can party. And with uh, with D, if I had that type of scheme going on, it was cool. So this is our, like our hangout spot for like over a year, probably a couple years was our everyday hangout spot. Lots of shenanigans went on there. It was, uh, I can't say the name of the street because then you'll know exactly everybody I'm talking about, but it was uh, our hangout. It doesn't matter what the street is. There was this kid that was, that was also one of our good boys that would hang out there, good kid, pothead, did no drugs, same story. There's a bunch of those types of kids there, you know, hanging out with us degenerates, you know, and they'd be smoking pot, we'd be doing worse things, they'd be calling us idiots. Anyways, um, so one of these kids had a friend that used to like 
use them and like rob them all the time. Not rob them like with a knife or beat them up and rob them, but rob them like I used to do to many people. It's just, hey man, let me borrow this money. I got, I got to pay a court fine or I got to pay this or I got to pay that. Weasel it into them to get the money and then never pay them back. Hit them up with stories, never pay them. Wait till it cools off and then do it again and again. So he had done this time. I don't know what got into me. I think I was just delusional from the amount of coke I was doing at the time where I got like offended that he did the did this thing to the good kid. Um, so I got mad that he got offended and I was like, I got offended and I got mad. And I was like, man, that's fucked up, man. He should stop bullying kids. This kid is a big kid. He's a big kid. Um, he used to play sports. Um, he was a fighter. He was always a tough kid, you know, way tougher of a kid and better fighter than I was. Um, toughness in terms of being able to fight, you know, if you can take a good ass whooping, you know, you're going to lose and walk into it and hold your head high. I think you're a tough kid too. I'm talking, he's tougher than me. Like he'll fuck me up. And he did. I called him out either on Facebook or I texted him. I forget exactly how I reached out to him. It doesn't really matter. But I reached out to him talking shit, talking reckless. I was definitely high or coming off a bender or just acting crazy, trying to get street cred in my bubble. And I uh, started talking shit. You shouldn't have did that to him. And he ain't taking that shit from me. He's like, are you fucking serious, kid? Like, you're going to talk shit to me? I'll fuck you up. And I was like, no. and then instead of being like, yeah, you will fuck me up. And you didn't rob me. What do I care? You know, um, I was like, yeah, you'll fuck me up. I don't give a fuck. We can fight right now. And, uh, <laughs> and it went on from there. So uh, we set up the fight, by, uh, maybe an hour or two went by until he walked there, found a ride there, something like that. And the kid I was fighting, for the story, I'll just call him the kid I was fighting. I'm getting mixed up with all the letters I'm using. Um, my memory isn't the best, though, even without the drugs, my memory's cooked. Um, so the kid I was fighting, he ends up getting there like an hour or two hours later. Now, he had previously, allegedly, for fictional fake purposes of the story, in my pretend story, he had allegedly um, robbed my friends, our friends, because he was cool with them too. He robbed, he robbed them for like their Xbox, maybe some pot, some money. He robbed them for whatever he could get one day, like on some like sneaky shit. He snuck it out of there, you know, on some sneaky shit, robbed them blind. And uh, some time had gone by, and he wasn't cool with everybody yet because of what he had done, but he was trying to kind of come back around and be cool and ask for forgiveness. And these are forgiving kids because I've done grimy shit to them as well. Nothing as bad as what he had done, I don't think, or I don't remember. Actually, maybe, maybe probably, I don't know, probably not, I don't know. Anyways, that is also not the point. So he was trying to get back in the crew, kind of, and uh, and then this shit popped off, and we're all over there, and they're like, Bert, who are you going to fight him? That's crazy. I'm like, I shouldn't be one to ask to fight him. I'm like, you motherfuckers should be ones that has to fight him. Because he robbed you guys. He didn't rob me. I was just talking shit to him, defending you guys. And he's robbing all of you guys. And nobody does shit. You just take it like fucking pussies, dude. And uh, like I said, I'm not big and bad, but I don't fucking play that shit, you know? Um, I'll stand up for what I feel is right, even in my dark times. I got my good side, even underneath all the drugs. That's why people used to forgive me all the time after shenanigans. Because they saw underneath the drugs, which was deep. I had a good heart and I'm a good kid and that kind of shined through um, now that I've been clean for a few years. Um, so I'm talking shit to my friends, kind of like, you guys should be ones fighting. Now one of them, Q, was definitely not gonna, he was not gonna fight. He's not the fighting type. He's a, uh, maybe an introvert. I don't know if I'm using the right term, but he's a good kid. He's not the, he's not the loud type. He's not the fighting type. He's not the he don't like drama. He likes to chill out, smoke his weed, go to work, and like just chill. He ain't about the drama and the bullshit. Me, I was like fed off the drama and the bullshit. I had nothing else going in my life, so that's all I had was the local drama and bullshit. So like I fed off that. That's like what I lived for at the time, which is sad because I was living at my mom's house. So like I should be figuring out a different game plan, walking down the street and sniffing coke every night. I don't even know how I afforded it. Not, I mean, oh yeah, that's right, scheming that shit too. Uh, but mostly from people I didn't like, not from my boys as much. A couple. Doesn't matter for the story's sake. Um, so now the kid's basically on his way there. I'm trying to talk my boys into fighting him. And like the kid Q, he wasn't going to fight. Good kid, not the fighting type. And I wasn't even putting it, putting it on him because he wasn't the fighting type to begin with. I was going to pressure him like that. I'm not like a bully either, you know, in any type of way. Um, I just try to stand up for what I feel is right. Um, now, our other boy, 
I think I'm calling him T, um, the other pothead kid. Now this dude was like a, a bodybuilder type kid, big kid, strong kid, you know, and uh, but not, you know, no disrespect if you're watching, but not the fighter type. He would fight if he had to. Like if you went up to him and punched him in the face, he would fight you for sure. Um, if his boys are fighting, eh, maybe if he had to, he would he would jump in. Maybe maybe not. He did watch me get jumped one time and didn't do shit to help except say my bad bird on the ride home watching me get jumped. Um, so that's the type, when it comes to fighting, that's the type of person he is when it comes to fighting and drama. He's a big, strong kid, but he doesn't really like to maybe fight. Um, he definitely doesn't like to fight. And he's fought and he's won fights, but overall, I'm saying, no disrespect. But not the fighting type. And I didn't give a fuck. I had nothing to live for. So I'll, I'll fucking get my ass kicked and fucking go sniff a line and be like, ha, that was crazy. Fuck, I got knocked out, ha. Huh? That's, that's what I end up doing at the end of this shit too, but we'll get there. Um, I'm putting the pressure on him because he's a bigger type kid. He's probably twice my size, taller, stronger, muscular, went to the gym every day, bodybuilding. And I'm like, damn, you got all these weapons, man. Fucking go out there and use them, man. Fuck, I got these little pea shooters. You want me to go fight this kid? He's fucking way bigger and better than me. Why don't you go out there and fight him? He robbed you, not me. And he wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. By this point, the kid that I fought is on the way there and is about to be there, I'm guessing. And I can't talk. I can't talk T into fighting. I can't talk. We'll call him bodybuilder kid. Too confusing with the letters. Bodybuilding kid doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to fight. I'm trying to pressure him into. He's not having it. I'm putting the heat on him because he's way bigger. And I know he's gonna fuck me up. And like I feel, I feel that my boy could win this fight because he's so big and strong. And like he ain't no bitch. He'll he'll fight. You know I thought. And if he didn't actually have to fight, I feel he could have won because the kid that was coming to fight me was way bigger and tougher and stronger. But he had kind of gone down the wrong road himself so he wasn't as big and as strong as he was at previous times the the drug game had kind of taken its toll on him also but he was still big and tough just not at you know if he was clean and big and tough he'd be a totally different animal but i felt like my boy who's just a pothead and went to the gym every day could probably beat this kid on, on stamina alone if you're fighting for a while it's fucking tiring to fight man the adrenaline it's tiring and if you're not in shape you're gonna get tired and then you can't do shit and you're like you literally can't do anything and it's over. You're either going to get fucked up or both people are going to be tired. Um, I figured maybe if it went down to a stamina type fight, he could win. Or I was thinking, he's so big, all he has to do is catch him one time. And the kid that I ended up fighting, like he's a little fucked up in the game uh, on drugs, so maybe you could catch him with like a, a, a shot out of nowhere and just drop him. Because this kid was big and strong. I'm telling you, man, he was big, muscular, bodybuilder type. Think like a bodybuilder type. Not like an ESPN bodybuilder type. They're on the steroids, like a non-steroid bodybuilder type. Um, probably non-steroids. Who knows? I don't think so. But there's been rumors. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so that he did steroids because I see him go to the gym every day. Um, he tried telling me to go and be like, dude, I've been slept in three days. I'm going to a fucking gym. He dragged me down there once. I didn't do anything. I did like a pull up and I was like, fuck this shit. Let's go get high. And he's like, I don't get high. Like, I'll be in the car. <laughs> and uh, that's a real story too. That shit happened. Uh, it was a, the uh, was it Planet Fitness in Chicopee, to be exact. So, you know, I'm not bullshitting. Fact check that. You can fact check all my shit. Um, because it's all real. And people watching this been there. Um, so, the kid is now getting there. I can't talk I can't talk bodybuilder into fighting him. The kid I fought is there to fight. And uh, so, the last thing I say to the bodybuilder, kid in his room, I'm like, fuck, he's here. Because they're like, yo, bird, he's here. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, I'll be right there. But, man, I was nervous. My heart was beating up. I was nervous. And I was scared to lose the fight. I'm not scared, but if you know you're probably going to lose a fight, there's a certain scared, not scared, a fear type of adrenaline would be a better word. A fear type of adrenaline that comes with it. Um, you, know, you get nervous, you get the shakes, you know it's about to go down, it might be bad for you, but you got to do it at this point. You're committed. You can't bitch out now. That went, that would go against everything I'd ever stood for in my whole junkie career up until that point. My whole adult life was based on not punking down, you know. Um, you know, most of the time. I usually just take my ass kicking and keep it moving. Um, so, the kid's there. My last plea with bodybuilder kid is, listen, bodybuilder kid, you're my boy, I love you. Because, dude, I still love this kid. He never did me wrong. He had my back so many times in life. When I was down and out and was a degenerate like in this time frame, he never disrespected me. He tried helping me. He helped me out so many times. I have normally... You know, burn him on stupid little small amounts of shit just because I was desperate and he's a good kid. But um, I was trying to get him to go fight. Um, and he wouldn't do it. And I said, listen, 
Last thing I said to him is, I'm going to go fight. I'm going to go fight the kid I'm about to fight. I know it's confusing because of the name, but I'm going to go fight the kid I'm about to fight. And he robbed you. You should be the one fighting him. You're big. You should go fight him. But if you don't want to, I get it. I'm probably going to go out there and get my ass kicked right now, to be real. And if I go out there and I lose the fight, um, you have to promise me that you'll go down there and you'll fight him and then you'll whoop his ass. Because by then, maybe you'll be tired. You'll have an extra advantage. You're big. Like, you can go in there and clean house and wrap it up at the end. That's what I was thinking that might might be a potential outcome, you know. And the last thing he said to me is, I got you, bird. And he gave me daps. And I kind of, I was mad about this for a long time because of what happened after that. You know, not mad. He was always my boy. But in the back of my mind, I was like, that was some bullshit that day. I am honestly long in the past now, long forgotten. I got nothing for the love, love for the kid now as I mostly always had. For a short time after this, I kind of, in the back of my head, I was like, uh, oh, that was kind of weak, but I mean, that's just being real. That's what happened. That's a fucking fact. And that's the truth of what happened. So he goes, I got you, bird. Gives me daps. I go out there. Now I'm pumped up. I'm like, yo, I'm going to go out there. Even if I lose, you know, he'll come out there and fuck him up and I'll, I'll win because then I'll just talk shit. You know, I'll be like, ha, like, like Smokey, like, you got to knock the fuck out. Like, ha, you know, I was planning on top. I was already planning what I was going to say after I lost the fight and after he went there and cleaned house and won his fight. Um, so he promised me that I went out there, make a long story short in terms of uh, the, the fight itself. It started off pretty decent. It's on, uh, it's on video. I, I kind of ran around. I, I threw a weak jab and maybe another weak jab. I think I got him with one weak jab. I missed him with the other weak jab, but I made contact with one, and I was like, oh, my God. In my mind, I was like, yo, I hit him. I was like, I'm going to pull off the upset. I'm going to be a fucking Ludlow Mass legend after I pull off this upset. This is like this is like the fucking um, – the Miracle on Ice, you know, where USA Hockey won the Miracle on Ice. I was thinking, I had all these delusions that I was going to pull off the upset because I got him with a weak-ass jab that they didn't phase him. When I actually hit him with the jab, he literally, and there is a video of this, um, me getting my ass kicked by this kid because they videotaped it because they knew I was about to get my ass kicked. <laughs> I fucked up, but whatever. I was down. I was like, yeah, videotape it. Maybe I'll win. Um, I hit him with a jab. I'm thinking, yeah, I got this maybe. And uh, he literally laughed. Like, we're squared up, and, like, I hit him, he's, like, maybe, like, <laughs> and I think he might talk shit a little bit, too, like, what the fuck, and I was, like, uh-oh, like, he didn't like that, so now I got a little nervous, he came in, he made quick work of me from that point, he came in, hit me with the right, hit me with the left, boom, uh, not a knockout blow, but a knockdown blow, then he went over, maybe he hit me one more decent time, and I was already not knocked out, but knocked down, and I was seeing stars, it was getting blurry for sure, it was close to a knockout, I felt the, uh, if you've ever passed out before, I felt the buggies coming. I was about to pass out. Um, I fought off passing out. Don't want to get knocked out at least. I won't be able to talk any shit then, no matter what. Even if my boy holds to his word and comes out there and wins, I can't get knocked out and then talk shit. I probably would have. <laughs> no, correction. I definitely would have. I was very, very cooked. Still am to a point, but I was, this is my super cooked days. Active, using drugs, me cooked. So I hit him with that. He, knock, he knocks me down, but not out. Hits me again one good time. And then it was mutual friends there. So they did the right thing, I feel, because you know, we were all friends at one point. Even the kid I fought had done a lot for me at different times in life. And we became friends before that and after that and all that. Like, this is just, we had a falling out. You know, it was one of your boys, you have a falling out. We both were doing bad things. We crossed paths sometimes. And it wasn't good. It usually wasn't good for me. Um, so he knocks him down, but not out. They came in, my friends did the right thing, and they broke it up. They're like, all right, that's enough, that's enough. And they kind of pulled him off there, and then he was like laughing at me, talking shit. As well, he should. I would have been doing the same shit, if not worse. Like, you fuck, what'd you think was going to happen, bird, you fucking piece of shit, junkie, or whatever you said, you know? I'm like, like man, I was like, maybe I could pull the upset, fuck you. Because me, even if I get knocked down or out, I'll keep talking shit. Because um, I don't know why. I don't have a reason for why. Maybe I'm just a fucking idiot. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm a fucking idiot. So. You know, as I they break up the fight and get him off me, now I'm getting up. I'm not really talking shit back to him. He's talking shit to me, but I wasn't like I wasn't stealing other people. I'm like, I'm like, you're about to get fucked up right now. And he's like, what? I'm like, I'm like a bodybuilder kid. Come here. And bodybuilder kid is shying back in the corner, not wanting to fucking go out there and do nothing. And I was like, yo, I literally begged him on his porch to please go fight this kid. You have to. You promised me. You give me your word. You said. I got you, Bird, and gave me daps. You have to go do this, man. You fucking promised. This kid robbed you. I'm yelling it. There's mad people there. I'm like, he fucking robbed you. I'm getting mad at my boy at the bodybuilder kid. And make a long story short there because I'm not trying to like pile on the kid for what happened, but you can tell I get fired up about it still because of what happened to me. 
Um, I was trying to defend you. I was trying to defend you and your whole house. And, and you won't go out there and defend yourself? Like, I was mad about it. I'm not going to harp on it uh, much more. So, whew, take a deep breath. Hold on. Take a little time. I got a little fired up there. The cigarette relapse is on and popping. My cat's taking a nap next to me. Like, my dad is fucking cooked. My fucking kitty cat's taking a nap. I'm waking him up. Getting crazy by myself in the living room on YouTube. Um, <laughs> whatever, man. There's like damn near 100 people viewed my last video. And we're doing good. So, I get knocked down and out. My friend, he won't go out there and fight. He doesn't stand to his word. And then here's where the idiot part of me comes in. Where I go, you know what? This is our pride alone. To be honest, I was hoping he would not take me up on the offer. I was hoping what would happen from this point forward did either bodybuilder go fight him or I'll be like you know what because I got mad I'm like fuck that I was like if you won't go fight him I'll go fucking fight him again I'm like I'll let him knock me out this time I was like I'll go fight him again he'll fuck me up again but I don't give a fuck so I ain't no fucking bitch and I'll go fight him right now and fucking I'm getting fired up I'm so angry dude and like if I had to I definitely 100% would have gone out there and like gotten beat up even worse again for some shit that wasn't even my fault for once um so I and all the boys were stepping in that kind of broke, pulled them off me earlier. Like, no, no, Brett's crazy. Don't do that. I mean, he just fucked you up. What's wrong with you, dude? It's on video. Do you want to see yourself getting knocked out? You got it on the camera phone over there. You're not going to fight him. What the fuck is wrong with you? Dude? Get away from me. Like, go inside. Go inside. I'm like, fuck that. I ain't going inside. I ain't no fucking bitch. I'll go fucking fight him right now. And uh, I would have if I had to, but thankfully I didn't have to. Um, the kid that I fought won the fight, went there, dropped me. The kid who we robbed didn't fight him. The other kid we robbed didn't fight him. The third kid that they robbed didn't fight him. They all watched me get beat up. They all watched me get up and then to defend their honor for some warped reason about bubble street cred, I was going to go I was gonna go get fucked up again because I didn't give a fuck. I never have. I probably never will. Actually, I give a fuck now. I wouldn't be doing shit like that now because... Now I go to work. My life is very different now. I go to work. I pay my bills. I just try doing the right thing. I hang out with good people. I don't hang out with drug users anymore. You know, I live a totally, completely different life now, which is why I do these stories. It's not to glorify me being a fucking dumbass and getting fucked up and burning people and doing horrible things to my friends and family who are trying to help me. I fucked over every time. It's not why I tell these stories. It's to glorify that. I do these stories um, to remind myself of the tough times and to realize I don't do shit like that no more. You know, I'm a different man. The problem was was not me. It was the drugs that I used and the drug addiction I had. That was my problem. And the kids would always forgive me because they said, you're a good kid. And they'd let me hang out back around. And I'd, I'd fuck them over again because I was so sick on the drugs. And that's the craziness of drug addiction. But that's why I do these stories and stuff. Spread hope, man. Um, lots of people watching these stories probably used to do drugs or might be doing drugs now, you know, and, uh, I get it, man. And you don't have to live like that no more. If you don't, if you don't have to, man, if you know me, ask anyone around about me and they'll tell you the lows and lows I hit. And I'm going to get into all those stories here on my channel. Um, cause it's therapeutic for me and it might help somebody who's suffering that might need some hope that if the fucking dumbass bird, man, who sniffs coke, talks shit, sets up a fight, gets beat up, tries to get beat up again, robs all his friends, burns all his people, <laughs> homeless, picking cigarettes out of the ashtray at the gas station. If that kid can get out of the gutter, out of the detox, out of jail, clean up, and have a nice, peaceful, great life, then anybody can fucking do it. And that is a fact from my heart. I'm an honest kid now. I was always a good kid, but now I'm a good kid and an honest kid. And if I could do it, anybody, fucking anybody could do it. Because I was walking in the streets homeless like a fucking bum loser for years and uh, never could get it right until I started praying to God. I started praying to God in jail, and that's when my life turned around. And uh, the jail stories will be coming up next, I promise. Sorry to delay them, but um, they'll come up next unless someone gives me a, a great idea that feels a better idea than my first jail story of when I get checked into jail on my first day there, my first couple of days there on the unit. I was a nervous wreck there too. I'd never really been in jail before. I was in like three days when I was like 19, but it wasn't really, it wasn't like this. Um, it wasn't shit compared to this. That is today's story where I talked shit, got beat up, tried getting beat up again to defend my friend's honor. 
but I'm pretty sure I owed money to all those kids at some point myself anyway, so the fact that I was up standing up for their honor when I did similar type shit, maybe not as bad, um, is how cooked I was. Happy and grateful not to live like that anymore, and I pray every day for guidance and protection. Stay safe during this fucking pandemic. Um, if I have to go back to work every day, um, if the channel is going well, I'll, I'll do my shit after work. If it fizzles out, then fuck it. It'll be on YouTube forever. Play this shit at my funeral. Bird Gang out.